Hey guys, Kyle here with Dark Iron Diesel. Uh, this is the part two video for replacing the head gasket on a 6.7 Cummins. This is the video I'll be doing the install. Uh, anyways, I'll just do my quick spiel. Please like and subscribe if you got questions, ask in the comments, or look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. Anyways, let's get at her. If you're just interested in me doing certain things, down below I will put fast forward times so you can uh, skip ahead. So I got the cylinder head back. Uh, it's all pressure tested, resurfaced, it's cleaned, it's good to go. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna dress this cylinder head how it was when I took it off the truck, like put these lifting hooks back on it. Put this grid heater in just with a couple bolts. Clean up your grid heater before you put it in though. Uh, only thing is I'm going to leave these guys off until I put it back in the truck just because it'll be way easier to tighten this uh, if this is secured onto the, the block. So. I'm just scraping off this gasket right now. Okay, the head is all dressed up. It's ready to go back in the truck. Now we're gonna go uh, to the truck and get the block ready for the head. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, you see these uh, head stud or head bolt holes there. I'm just gonna put a screwdriver in there to kind of get the oil to push out. Uh, I'm gonna do it with a rag though, uh, just because you don't want this oil going into your uh, coolant here. If it falls in there, it's fine, but so just try to wipe it up with the rag. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of give this a little polish uh, Just buff it off. This is what I'm using uh, Just you don't want to see sparks You just want to gently go over this just to kind of give it that shine back You don't want to take metal off uh, Just be very careful and be mindful where the dust and everything is shooting you you, you know You want to try to keep this as clean as possible Okay, I got the deck all nice and clean. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take rags. I'm gonna get in here and just kind of clean out all my pistons and uh, just get all the gunk, everything, you know, a little debris, bits of dirt, everything. Just clean it out of your cylinders, out of your pistons and just get her nice and clean for the head gasket. One more thing we gotta do before you put the new head gasket on is just get, uh, you know, a straight edge. Uh, a level, something like that. Put it on here and uh, see if there's any low spots. Uh, it's good to get a couple feeler gauges and stick some feeler gauges under here. And uh, you know, just make sure that your block isn't warped. Once you're happy with it, everything's clean, there's no debris on it, then you can put your new gasket on. And I just wanna say once more, like I said in the first video, that this is just how I do it. This is what works for me. I've never had an issue but uh, I don't claim to be doing it. You know, this is the only way to do it or this is the best way to do it. This is just how I do it. Okay, I got my new head gasket. Typically, the words face up. That's not always the case, but uh, if I put that guy on here, put on my pins there, there. I'm just gonna check over and make sure all my holes line up and that it's not blocking any passages and yeah, put the head on. I ended up unplugging this uh, this plug from here just because that kind of gave us a little grief when we pulled the head out. So with that unplugged, we shouldn't get caught on anything when we're putting the head in. Here is underneath the head, nice and shiny, and a nice new shiny gasket. It's all ready to go. So when you're putting this head on, there's two dowel pins, one here and one back there. 
and uh, you're gonna just line up the head back here as best you can and then slowly lower it down onto those dowel pins and you should feel it kind of lock into place when it falls on the dowel pins. Yeah, front's on. All right, well, I think we're on. Okay, well, the head's in. It went in super well. Uh, it's a good idea to just kind of check around it. Uh, I put a mirror down in here so I could, I went kind of like this so I could see uh, all along there and make sure that it was, there was nothing stuck under there. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be using ARP head studs instead of bolts. There's part number, if it will focus there. Uh, this shows you your torque sequence. Here are all your washers your nuts and your studs. So the reason why these are so much better is that instead of just being a bolt that just threads down and holds your head down, you just kind of thread this into the into your block and then this got fine thread up here and it will actually, you can tighten the nut and it will clamp the head to the block instead of just kind of bolting the head to the block. So it definitely helps if you're gonna, you know, run some higher horsepower tuning or you know just longevity of your head gasket i always recommend doing this actually i won't even warranty a head gasket job if the customer refuses to pay the extra couple hundred bucks for head studs so so i got all the stuff out of the box here i'm gonna open this uh your fastener assembly lubricant and i'm just gonna put a little bit on all the threads rub it in there with a brush get them all nice and lubed up and same with uh the nuts, I'm gonna to try to put a little bit on threads in the nuts. And I'm just gonna gently coat the washers as well, just with a little bit of, of this uh, lubricant. I'm gonna put it all in here. Once they're all lubed up and ready to go, we'll start putting them in the truck. Okay, you can either do this before or after you lube them up, but if you kind of stand them all up, you're gonna notice that six of them are a little bit longer. You wanna pull those six bolts out, or those studs out, and those studs are gonna be going on the side closest to the exhaust manifold. Okay, I got the six out. I put the one next to it just as a comparison so you can see they're just a little bit shorter. So this one can go back in here. Anyways, these six, you put them, the coarse thread down and this Allen key on top. But these six are gonna go in here, two, three, four, five, six. So all these ones along your exhaust manifold are gonna have the longer bolts. Once you have all those six studs in, you can grab the rest of the studs, again, this side up, and just put them in all the other holes. Now you're gonna grab a five millimeter Allen key or socket like I have here. And you're gonna, I usually start at the front here, but you're gonna tighten them all the way hand tight till they bottom out. And then once you have them tight, you're just gonna back it off a quarter turn. So you're gonna do that to all of them. Tighten them all down hand tight till they bottom out and then back them off a quarter turn. Okay, all my studs are in there. I did them all the way tight till I bottomed out and backed them off a quarter turn. Now we're gonna put all the washers on each stud and then we're going to put the nuts on. 
Okay, all my washers are on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put all the nuts on. Okay, all my nuts are on. I'm just using a 14 millimeter 12 point socket with 3 8 drive right now. And I'm just threading them all down to the bottom. Just, uh, just hand tight. All right, now we can torque the head studs. So I'm just gonna hold the camera on here a little bit so you guys can pause it or whatever. But that's the torque sequen sequence right there. So if you kind of look, that's your exhaust manifold side on the top and that's the sequence we're doing. So as you can see, it'll be like one, how does it work? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, kind of like that. Just the opposite of how we took the head, the head bolts out, we're putting the head studs in from the middle out just to prevent warping as we tighten it. So uh, yeah, first torque is 40 foot pounds, second torque is 80 foot pounds, and the final torque is 125 foot pounds. So you're gonna torque them three times. Personally, on the third final torque, I usually just go up to 130 foot pounds, but that's just me. Okay, first torque is done. Now I'm gonna torque them to 80. I'm still just using this uh, 3 8 torque wrench. Uh, for the final torque, I will have to go up to using a half inch torque wrench, but this one's small and it works good for now. So let's see if we can get 80 out of this guy. There we go. Okay, that's the second torque. Uh, one more torque to go. Uh, 125 foot pounds. Like I said, I usually do 130, but it's up to you. I usually click them twice each time on the final torque. Okay, they're all torqued down. One thing we're gonna have to do is this uh, rocker arm kind of housing there. We're gonna have to do a little bit of machining on it. Uh, that's on this guy here but uh, we're gonna do that when we have to put it on. So next we're gonna do is we're gonna put this exhaust manifold back on. So just uh, get your new gaskets, put them in there, put your bolts in. Uh, remember these front ones have studs for that heat shield. Uh, the back bottom one should have a stud for that uh, coolant line. I don't think the 2013 and newer 6.7 Cummins have that coolant line, uh, coolant line but uh, if they do, you gotta put it back on. We'll also put this, uh, uh, turbo coolant line hook that all back up. Yeah, we'll just get this all mounted back up to the side of the head Okay, I got all the gaskets and the studs uh, in place here um, Now I'm just going to tighten them all up to 32 foot-pounds and start at the middle and work your way out So do this one first and this one bottom ones kind of work your way out as you torque them all to 32 foot-pounds Okay, the exhaust manifold is all torqued down. I got uh, the coolant line that runs underneath it. I got it bolted up. Uh, there's a bracket up here and one on the back of the stud. Uh, it's connected. So I'm gonna put these two uh, coolant fittings in, get that cab heater hose on and put my dipstick bracket at, back on and kind of just finish everything on the passenger side. Okay, that's all done up. Now you can uh, pivot your alternator back on, bolt your alternator back up, and put your belt on. Okay, once you got your alternator back on, uh, you got your belt on, there's these wires, your grid heater wire, and these guys here. Uh, bracket there, bracket there. Zip tie them back up. Uh, we're gonna leave this upper rad hose off for right now though, just because it's gonna be a little bit easier to see down in there when we're doing our valve set. So just get all this wiring uh, mounted and, and strapped back up. I got a little bit ahead of myself, forgot to put this guy on, this heat shield on your exhaust manifold, so I'm just gonna quickly slap that on right now. Okay, heat shield's on. I got this exhaust pressure tube uh, just in there loose. It's my nice new fancy tube. Uh, electrical is all tied up here. So now, before I forget, we're gonna go back here and that fuel line that goes on the back of the head, back here, we're gonna put that one on. 
It should just be this banjo bolt and these two uh, washers, seal washers. So uh, just, yeah, make sure you these washers are in and put her on. Okay, the fuel line is on at the back of the head. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put the injectors in. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we gotta put new uh, copper washers and O-rings on the injectors. So I just use a really uh, small flathead screwdriver. Just kind of get it in here. Just kind of pry it up. Be very careful with these injectors, especially the tips. You don't want to wreck nothing. So, kind of just work it, and there, that's one off. And the O-ring, that's pretty easy. Just kind of get it off there. Boom, and that's it. So I'm gonna take off the copper washers and the O-rings on all the other five injectors, and then we'll uh, talk about putting the new stuff on. Okay, I usually give them just a little shot of brake clean, clean them up a bit, and use like a, this whatever Scotch Brite or SOS pad or whatever, and just kind of clean up this tip a bit. Make sure you got all the soot off of it. Okay, once you're happy with how clean it is. Uh, you get your new copper washer. It doesn't matter which way you put it on, but uh, put it on there, just kind of get it going. And then it's gonna, it's gonna, you're probably only be, gonna be able to put it on about that far. So we're gonna use a socket and just gently tap it on. I'm just using a shallow 3 8 uh, socket here. You could also use a 10 millimeter or something like that, but I'm just gonna gently tap it on. Just like that. And then with the O-ring, I just put a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly on it. You can use oil, whatever. Then just slide it on. Kind of roll it over. Just like that. Another way that works good to put these copper washers on is uh, just kind of get started like that. And grab the socket, just put it down, actually put it down that way. Line it up and then just kind of press it down like that. Done. Okay, so I'm just putting some uh, petroleum jelly on my O-ring. You can use oil or whatever you prefer. I'm gonna get this guy, make sure you have it lined up right. So just peek in the hole first, make sure there's uh, nothing in your injector hole. Uh, so here is where your feed tube is gonna go. So that is gonna go to towards the, the driver's side. So just make sure you have it orientated correctly. Again, that hole goes to the right side. Then you're just gonna set your injector in there. And then I just use my two thumbs and you're just gonna push it down and you're gonna feel it snap into place. Just like that. Now you're gonna get your two injector uh, hold down bolts, thread them in hand tight. And you notice that this can kind of pivot. You wanna keep that as level as possible. So when we tighten it, we're gonna tighten, you know, one turn on the right side and then one turn on the left side. Okay, so your first torque is gonna be 44 inch pounds. So see, I'm tightening a bit on each side just to kind of keep it level as it gets tight. There we go. Let's double check this one. And that's not our final torque. We have to put our fuel tubes in first and then do a loose torque on them as well. And then we finally final torque these and then final torque the fuel tubes. But yeah, that is how you're gonna put your injector in for right now. So get them all in and torque them down to 44 inch pounds. Okay, all six injectors are in there. Just remember these injectors have to go back in the same hole they came out. And it's even more important that these uh, fuel tubes go in to the same injector they came out of. That's why it's important to keep everything in order. So 
Anyways, I'm gonna put my number six injector fuel tube in now. I'm gonna do all of them, but uh, yeah, what I do is I'm gonna spray it out with the uh, brake clean and some air, you know, just clean it all out. Uh, these O-rings, I'm not gonna bother changing them because they still look fine, uh, but I'm gonna put more petroleum jelly or you could use oil on this O-ring and then uh, see how they got that tab on the top. That's where they're orientated in a certain way. And they're the same thing. You put them in and push on them and they'll just kind of go pop into place just like the injector did. So this one's going in cylinder three. So that little tab has to be up. So you kind of, if you turn it to the side, you can kind of feel right there where the tab goes in. And then just like the injectors, you're just gonna pop them in. Just like that. Okay, once all your fuel tubes are in, you're gonna put the, the lock nuts on. I already got the back three done, but uh, yeah, just make sure they're clean and spin it on. Okay, now these feed tube nuts, we're gonna torque them all to 11 foot pounds. Just 11 right now. There we go. Okay, once you have all your feed tube uh, tubes torqued down to 11 foot pounds. We can go back to the injectors and we're going to torque the injector hold down bolts to 89 inch pounds and that will be your final torque. Again, try to kind of alternate from side to side so you're screwing the, the nut or the bolts down evenly. Okay, once you have these uh, injector hold down Bolts torqued to 89 inch pounds. Uh, you can torque the fuel tube nuts to 37 foot pounds. Okay, so the fuel injectors and the tubes are all in and torqued to spec. Uh, now we're gonna put the high pressure fuel rail back in. Before you put this fuel rail in, uh, make sure you give it a good bath with brake clean, sprayed out with air. Like see right there, there's some stuff stuck in those holes. You don't want any crud or any dirt or anything in those holes. So just give it a good clean uh, before you put it in the truck. I'm leaving this bolt out here just because that's what this uh, oil dipstick mounts to, but I don't want to put it back up there quite yet. Okay, my fuel rail is in. Uh, I connected these lines too. Remember to go down on your CP3 pump and uh, tighten that one that you loosened just to pivot the line over, so make sure all those lines are tight. And I also put this one bracket in there back on. So now I'm gonna go find my new gasket. Make sure this surface is nice and clean and the surface on your intake elbow is clean and we can put the intake elbow back in. Okay, intake horn is back in. Uh, I left this bolt loose for right now though, just cause I, I wanna leave this off to the side for now. Uh, but yeah, we can go and we can start putting these fuel injector lines back in, start at the back, work your way up to the front, and just again, spray them out with brake clean and air, just so that they're all clean. They don't have any contamination in it because you don't want any contamination to get into your fuel injector. So clean them all up nice and start putting them back on. So when I'm putting these injector lines on, I just spin them up hand tight, just like this. I'm not sure on the actual torque spec, I never looked it up. I'm sure you could find it easy, but just kind of snug it up. And then just once you kind of feel it get tight, I usually just give it a little snug, just like that. So this one here, kind of, it's a little snug there. Grab another bite. Just like that, should be good. Just give it a give it a good snug, but it definitely don't over tighten it. Once you got all your fuel injector lines in and they're tightened up, we will put the push rods, uh, rocker bridges, and the rocker arms in. Okay, so we get a push rod, wipe it down. I usually kind of just look down, make sure it's nice and straight. If you want, you can get it on a flat surface and you can roll it and just make sure it rolls smooth and doesn't kind of wobble. Uh, but this push rod's good. Again, these all have to go in the same place they came out of. Uh, and here I have some 1540 synthetic engine oil, which is the oil I'll be using. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip the bottom of 
the push rod in the oil, and then I'm gonna go install it in its proper hole. Now remember these ones back here, kind of hard because you have to put them up in that hole in the firewall, but there we go, I got that one in. So that's one of them. Make sure the ends are all clean. See how this one has a bunch of crud in it. So I'm just gonna blast that out with a shot of brake clean before I put it in. So just show you, if you don't get the push rod in the right spot, it's kind of gonna fall down like that. Uh, so you want them all to be kind of sticking up like the ones you can see in all those guys. So you kind of just gotta fish around there. I found the spot and it's almost like when you put the push rod in, it almost sticks in there. Like I gotta kind of pull it and then it'll pop out, but you can kind of feel it grabbing in its right hole. So, but they should all look, they're gonna vary a little bit in height because of where the camshaft is but they should all be, you know, just a little bit above all these head, head studs. Okay, now we're gonna put these uh, rocker bridges in. I already have the back three cylinders done. Uh, see they have this little kind of nipple here. It's a little bit bigger of a hole on that side. I've seen them in engines, you know, this way, that way. Uh, I've seen them mix, mix and match. Uh, this one, they were all pointed towards the driver's side, so that's just how I'm gonna put them all back. I, I like uh, if they're all consistently the same way. So yeah, you can just set those in. Okay, we can put our rockers back in now. So remember we took them all off in the same order. We're putting all back in in the same order. So kind of hold them all together in one piece. And set it down on top of where it goes. Make sure the push rods are in and yeah then you can tighten it down. I should also add that with these rockers, check these little uh, pivots here that go on your rocker bridges. Just make sure they're not falling apart and that they still wobble smoothly. And if they don't, and if they're really rough, then you might wanna get a new, uh, a new rocker arm for whichever one it is. So the rocker bolts are getting torqued to uh, 27 foot pounds. Okay, so now with all of the valve train assembly here tight, we can do a valve adjustment. So actually on the front of your engine, you got your harmonic balancer and uh, there's a, a line on it and we have to get that line right up to 12 o'clock position. So it's kind of hard for me to show on the camera, but I, I'm gonna go underneath there, I'm gonna find the line and then I usually use a paint marker and I just kind of give it a little, a mark so that when I look from up here, I can see it, like there it is down there. That's, this is not the line, that's just the pulley, but uh, I can see it a lot better from up here if I put a paint line on it. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm under the truck now. I just have a 15 millimeter socket on a half inch bar to turn it over, just turning right on one of the bolts for this uh, harmonic balancer. Uh, so here, if you can see that, it says TDC, and see how hard it is to see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark it with a paint marker. Okay, there, I got it marked, so now it's gonna be much easier to see from the top of the engine. So what we gotta do now is we gotta rotate this to be exactly 12 o'clock so straight up in the upright position. So usually get a guy up there watching and you can slowly uh, crank this engine over, turn it clockwise. Okay, if we can see down here, there you can kind of see, sorry, it's at an angle, but there's the white line. It's exactly in the 12 o'clock position. You can kind of see that. And so you're either gonna be on top dead center one or top dead center six. I personally like to be on one and I start with one and I am on one because here's my cylinder one and both of my rockers are loose. If I go back to cylinder six, that one's got a tiny bit of play in it, but that one's real tight. So I know I'm on TDC one. Okay, so first I wanna say uh, these are the intake arms and these are the exhaust arms. So intake is smaller, exhaust is bigger. So at cylinder one TDC, which is what we are because these are both loose, we can adjust the intake cylinders one, two, and four. So they should all be loose. So one, two, and four, yeah, they're loose. 
And then we can also do exhaust one, three, and five. So one, three, and five. So the Cummins factory valve lash spec, uh, if you're setting them, I don't know if you can read it, but it's 10 thou on the intake and then it is 26 thou on the exhaust. So see, these are actually stepper gauges. They work really good. So the first half on this one is 10 thou and the second half is 12 thou. So they're easy because I can slide in there. It should kind of tightly slide in the first bit and then it shouldn't go past this half mark. So that's the, those are the, the gauges I use. I'll just show you how to do one here. We're gonna do uh, the intake on cylinder one. So with it loose like this, kind of hold your rocker bridge down and lift it up and just see, and see that's way too loose. This thing goes right through it all the way. So what you gotta do, if you haven't already backed off this adjusting nut, you gotta do that. And then you're just gonna grab an Allen key here and you're gonna turn it in. I usually kind of turn it all the way in until it's a little tight and then back it off and go from there. So I kind of try that now. Kind of got to fight with it a bit. You can sometimes put the gauge on it too and kind of just gently tighten it onto the gauge just so that the gauge will go in. So see there, it slides in, but it doesn't slide on to the 12 thou, but the 10 thou is in there and it's got a little bit of friction. So you don't want it to slide in there too easy. So that's what I like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hold it in that position and I'm going to tighten this nut here, the lock nut, just like that. And then double check it once more. So there, see, it goes in a little tight, but that's good. And it won't go past that half mark. So this valve is adjusted. And what I do when I adjust a valve is I just get a paint marker and just go like that. So I know this valve is done and uh, you can move on to the next one. Okay, so I've done my intake on cylinder one, two, and four. I've also adjusted my exhaust on cylinder one, three, and five. Cylinder five and six are a little bit fun to get back there to adjust the valves. But anyways, uh, these are all tight. Uh, the nuts are torqued to 18 foot pounds. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back down to our uh, crankshaft pulley and we're going to rotate it exactly 360 degrees. We're gonna get that uh, top dead center mark up again. And what that's gonna do is uh, that's gonna put cylinder six at the back on top dead center and then we can adjust the rest of the valves there's my line that's halfway another halfway to go okay if you can see down there right down there i got the mark on my crankshaft pulley it's right up at the 12 o'clock position. Okay, so now that you have it back up at 12 o'clock position, your cylinder one here should be tight. See how that's tight? And then your cylinder six here, that one's loose and that one's loose, so that's good. But now you can adjust the rest of the valves. Uh, so you should have intake on cylinder three, cylinder five, and cylinder six. And you should have the exhaust, on cylinder two, cylinder four, and cylinder six. Basically everything that you didn't do the first time, you can do now. Okay, all the valves are adjusted to spec. Uh, now, personally, what I do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna crank the engine over uh, just with my ratchet on the crankshaft pulley there. I'm gonna crank it over you know a few times anyways and then i'm going to set to tdc one and i'm going to check my valve lash again on all of them and then i'm going to set to uh, tdc six i'll rotate it 360 degrees and i'm going to check my valve lash again just because sometimes you might notice after you crank the engine over a little bit it will loosen up okay my valve set's all done i uh 
crank the engine over a couple times by hand and check my valves again and they actually a few of them had loosened up so i'm glad i did that so anyways now we can grab this uh upper rad hose and put it on there obviously i i always recommend using a new thermostat uh, when you're doing a head gasket so i'm gonna just go get my new thermostat and flop her in there Okay, now we can put this rocker housing piece in. Uh, this is how it sits in the truck. This is the back, and we need to actually modify this a bit for to fit in that with that head stud, because the head stud, the head stud comes up and actually hits up here. So we have to cut this out. I'll grab a paint marker and just show what I'm gonna cut out. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but that's just where I'm gonna cut it out. Uh, the picture on the instructions, see that's how they have it cut out and it's showing how they cut it out. I'm just going to use a little die grinder and I'm just going to blast that uh, aluminum out of there. There it's all, it's all drilled out and uh, this is ready to go on. I'm just going to take this gasket out, replace the gasket with a new one and spray this off with brake clean and air and then put it on. Like anything, I always uh, tighten from the inside out. Now you can put your injector harness uh, gasket back in. I'm using a new one, but you could use uh, your old one and just be fine. These do not need to be very tight. Uh, I just kind of go, I'm just doing it with like a nut driver. Once you get it all the way screwed down, I just give it a little tighten like that. That's it. Very low torque spec. Do not over tighten these. Try to pour some oil over top of the rockers and the valve springs. Uh, back there, if you have a little oil squirt gun, it's best to just to kind of get back there and lube up all the parts. They're gonna get oil as soon as you get oil pressure when you fire it up, but it's good to just kind of pre-lube them so they're not running dry. Okay, once you got a little oil in there, you can put the valve cover back on. Once you got the valve cover in, you can put your crankcase ventilation filter in. Uh, I always recommend putting a nice new filter in because guys tend to overlook this uh, part of their maintenance. So put your CCV filter cover on now. Now there's all this electrical, uh, these uh, hoses, this uh, dipstick, there's a bolt back there for it. Basically, uh, well, and you got this guy we unplugged to get the cylinder head in. Uh, just all this uh, electrical, uh, bolt it back up and plug everything in. Okay, all my electrical, uh, hoses and everything brackets are bolted up on the driver's side if you have an EGR system on your truck This is when you're gonna you know have to put everything back in place uh, But as for me, this is it. So last thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna change my fuel filter just because we had a lot of uh, fuel lines and everything open Don't want to get any contamination. I feel like a nice fresh fuel filter will be good And I'm also gonna do an oil change on it uh, leaving this air intake uh, pipe out just so I can get at this oil filter very easily um, So yeah, I'm gonna do fuel filter oil change and I'm gonna fill the coolant and Then we'll see we'll get it running I always use a new rad cap every time I do a head gasket job, but yeah uh, Oil change is done, fuel filter has been changed. Uh, it's topped up with coolant. This guy is back in, batteries are hooked up. So now, one more thing before I crank is I'm going to actually just loosen this front injector fuel line a bit just so we can bleed out all the air out of the system as I crank the truck over. It's a little loose there, so I'll we'll watch for fuel coming out there. Uh, before you do it, I just grab this fan and give it a spin. Make sure it's not going to hit on anything. Do one final kind of check over. Make sure you don't have any tools laying around. 
and uh, yeah, you can get your buddy or yourself, if you're doing it with two guys, it works better, but get them to crank it and while you watch. Before you try to start the truck, if you change the fuel filter, just turn the key on for 30 seconds and shut it off, turn it on again for 30 seconds. Do that a couple times, it should just help prime your fuel filter. Okay, crank. Carter here is cleaning up a nice diesel spill because when he changed the fuel filter, he never shut that, uh, that uh, drain plug. So when we were trying to prime our system, it was just all pissed out on the ground. So, <laughs> hey, Carter. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got some diesel fuel coming from there, so we're just gonna tighten up this injector line now. Okay, our fuel line's tight, so I'll crank her again. There you go. Okay, so once it's running good, you know, uh, check your oil, check your coolant level, um, check for leaks, look underneath it. I'm gonna park this thing outside, let it idle for a bit, and then go take it for a drive and drive it up to temperature, and then do one final check over all the fluids and everything. But uh, yeah, should be uh, pretty good. Hopefully yours went as well as this one. Okay, well that concludes my video for uh, head gasket replacement on a 6.7 Cummins. Uh, I feel like you should be able to follow along if you're pretty decent with a wrench. Um, if you liked the video, if you found it useful, please like and please subscribe. I put a lot of work into making this video for you guys. Um, yeah, if you got any questions, ask in the comments or look me up on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching.